Welcome to Loop TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster. I'm thrilled to have a return of Matt Joyce. He is an independent Tesla analyst. He has also been uh, a remarkably strikingly correct on the trajectory of this company over. I've been following your work for I think the better part that since the day the Model 3 was announced, I think that feels, I don't know, was that yeah. seven years ago? <laughs> A long time ago. A long time ago. You're doing a great job and uh, good to have you back. The topic today is related to just giving some time for the Tesla results to marinate and wanted to kind of go over four topics that kind of sprung from the report, from the deliveries and from the earnings call. So I'll jump right in here. And we know that the deliveries were better than expected that they reported back in early April. The growth rate of delivery is up 109% year over year. That compares to up 61% in the December quarter. I think it's like 44% in the September quarter. Accelerating growth off of higher numbers, definitional of a growth story. But of course, in the world of Wall Street, that is only part of the story. It's what are you going to do for me lately? What have you done for me lately? What will you do? So if we think about the street now is at 850,000 vehicles for uh, 2000. Uh, 21 up from 500,000 last year. Best guess, Matt, of uh, where they're going to end up landing. Yes, yeah, so you asked me this question on Loop TV episode 45. At the time, the street was at 762,000 vehicles. I said it would be at least 850,000 plus. Uh, and now the street is basically where I was at the time. So they've opted about 100,000 units. Uh, now I think it's going to be 900,000 plus, which would imply 80% year over year growth, uh, in vehicle deliveries and like, where else can you find and invest in a hyper growth mega cap technology company? It's, and they're not even just doing software and, and bits, they're doing atoms and car manufacturing, which is incredibly difficult to grow. And they still have that hyper growth going. So, uh, kudos to them. And the, if you think about the 80, we call it 900,000 plus deliveries, how much of that is going to be Cybertruck? Zero. Yeah, Cybertruck will not come until next year. And I, I, I feel pretty confident about uh, that. They mentioned late this year on the call. On the call, they mentioned late this year for the semi truck. The Cybertruck, they actually did not discuss. Getting my trucks confused there. Thank you for straightening yep. me out. As these hyper growth numbers, impressive. One thing that did catch my eye on the negative side was that the U.S. market share, I think it drifted down from, this is for EV market share from Tesla had about 80%. And now it's, I think, in the low 70%. <laughs> and understandable given there's just more competition out there and the market's starting to expand that you're going to see a downward on that market share, the EV market share. Ultimately, where do you think that their EV market share bases out at? All right, so this is a little more complex uh, question than, than perceived. So 12 months EV market share trailing for Tesla in the United States is 73.4%. I mean, uh, that's from high at, seven, at 80, so it's actually 73. Trailing 12 months. Currently, like the last few months, it's been a little lower than that, but that's from Piper Sandler, Alex Potter, uh, that research analyst over there, always sending out great charts. Um, so second is Chevrolet at 9.1%. So they've got, you know, 73% to 9% for number two. So uh, they've got plenty of room. And I, I don't think that uh, market share and maintaining 70% plus is necessarily the goal. <clears throat> if you see Apple has what a 20% smartphone market share worldwide, uh, but they take home over 90% of all industry profits globally. Um, so I think Tesla will do something very similar. US EV penetration is only 2% right now. In China, it's 6%. In Europe, it's 11%. So uh, Tesla's market share will naturally fall like it has in China. It's at 15%, not 70 some, and they're crushing it. In Europe, it's only at 10% market share and they have the largest EV penetration at 11%. And EV unit market share is a lot less important than revenue share. So for example, General Motors, they've gotten a lot of press coverage lately for their Hongguang Mini EV, 
outselling the Tesla Model 3 in China. And it's like, okay, would I rather be invested in that business? Like, of course it outsells the Model 3 when one is $4,000 and the other is $40,000, right? So what matters is revenue and gross margins at maturity. Uh, so Elon thinks the Model Y will be the best-selling vehicle in the world by revenue next year, and then potentially even units by 2023. And currently, the best-selling vehicle in the world by units is the Toyota Corolla at 1.5 million. So now think about the coming inflection point for Tesla's mission and market share. You've got the large luxury vehicles, the F and X. They start at 80K and they sell about 100,000 units per year. So that's kind of the global demand, right? Tesla's mid-sized luxury vehicles, the three and Y, starting at roughly 40K, will sell 2 million plus vehicles per year. That's their global demand. So basically cutting the price in half from 80K to 40K, 20X is that TAM or total addressable market. Now take what's coming, undoubtedly, the $25,000 small size vehicle that will be made in China and exported to the rest of the world. What's 40K? Yeah, so what's 40K to 25K? How much does that bump the total addressable market? I think 5X is reasonable. In that case, it would be 10 million vehicles per year. 10 million times 25K, which isn't even including options, that's $250 billion in revenue. That's how much Apple makes annually. So just the scale of, of what a $25,000 Tesla can do is remarkable. And market share, obviously, once they lower the price and jack up the units, that's going to help them from a unit market share perspective. And the other thing is that the average amount of people, uh, vehicle occupancy is 1.5 passengers per vehicle on the road. So that's also, that small vehicle is also going to be a game changer for scaling economy worldwide. You mentioned about some of the lower market shares in China and Europe and where it's at in the U.S., the mm -hmm. trailing aspect. And so it's, if it was 80%, it's probably drifting in the 60s if we're looking at that. You uh, mentioned that we should see it kind of basing at uh, some one number. Is that the right kind of long-term benchmark is 15, 20%? Uh, EV market share, uh, is it 25? Is it five? How do you, it's purely guesses at this point, but where do you think that that ultimately, once we factor in model two eventually, <laughs> where, where does that go? I actually think there's a better question and that's where, what, were, what will Tesla's market share by revenue be worldwide in light vehicle sales? Who cares if it's electric? The goal is just to replace the entire global fleet of 2 billion vehicles and, and bring them into the world, the new world of mobility and electric and smart. Um, so that's where right now Tesla's share is about 1%. Uh, and that is up to double from half a percent uh, like a year and a half ago. So I think that's the, the best number to keep an eye on is what is Tesla's market share for all vehicles? Yeah, that's exactly where eventually all vehicles go electric. So eventually Tesla's market share mm -hmm. will kind of morph into a global just light vehicle market share. And, and what would be your guess on that then? Where do you, I think like what's Volkswagen at 15 percent, something like that? Well, I think if you're talking new vehicles sold, everything is going to go electric. So uh, if you're talking a decade from now and the internal combustion goes the way of the BlackBerry and flip phone, uh, then typically, you know, all vehicles going forward that are new and produced would be electric vehicles. And I think that 20% range uh, would, would be a remarkable business because that would be, I mean, the auto business is, is huge worldwide. The biggest car maker in the world at that point. And I've generally thought of this as kind of eventually it's about the total light vehicle market share in the low 20% range. So my thought is, yes, the market share numbers are going to be coming down, but the mm -hmm. growth in units is going to be going up, as, as you mentioned. So I want to change topics here and jump into FSD. Came up on the call, understandably, related to uh, the press. It's a horrible accident that happened in Texas. And my, my question is this, is uh, what, how would you describe the company's posture, public posture related to full FSD? Uh, before, I mean, take a step back before 
if we go back to the when they reported the December quarter, Elon had talked about full FSD by the end of this year. Uh, how would you describe their posture today? I think Elon likes to push limits and push people to achieve impossible sounding deadlines. Uh, and while sometimes late, uh, this strategy does result or at least seems to result in the most absolute progress regardless of talk, uh, which is what matters most in my opinion. Um, all that matters to long-term Tesla investors is that Tesla is and remains the leader in autonomy and solves general autonomy before any of their competitors do. Um, so short term, I believe the market will understand that Tesla's strategy of leveraging over a million smart electric vehicles to train its neural network with vision is superior to the competition. And long term, I believe Tesla will achieve that robo taxi holy grail. Uh, it's not going to be at the end of 2021. And, and that's fine. Uh, it's potentially the most difficult challenge that humans have ever tried to solve. And I mean, if this is solved within even a few years, that would be uh, that would be impressive. I'm in the three to five year camp. What camp would you say? I don't want to put words in your mouth. The two year camp. The yeah. So Elon seems to be right uh, a little late because he thinks, okay, this is the strategy that is going to get us to full self driving. And then along the way, he gets these insights as he gets more information, more data leverage from the fleet, uh, more advancements in vision and neural network training and technology, uh, where now it just went from, hey, is LIDAR needed for full self driving to not only is LIDAR not necessary in his opinion, but now he's going to scrap radar and just go all vision. Um, so this is where like, rewriting autopilot where now they're doing kind of a 4D rewrite, which include instead of a bunch of different snapshots of videos, now the system can actually understand in a fourth dimension, which is time, uh, and then leveraging that, that project dojo for the neural network learning, a million cars now, I mean, they're gonna make a million cars and uh, close to a million cars in 2021, it's only gonna increase from there, so, as the machine learning and neural network gets better and the fleet gets larger, uh, the, the rate of progress is going to accelerate. So it's really difficult to judge when that inflection point is going to be. And I think it's going to be later than, than Elon thinks. Fair, so definitely not this year. What do you think the companies, uh, does what happened in Texas change the timing of when we're gonna see full FSD? change their public posture to comments around it? Does it change the actual timing? Yeah, so this is tricky. I'm not sure uh, what it would take for NHTSA to intervene and, you know, halt testing of Tesla autopilot or full self-driving or uh, force Tesla to delay the beta rollout. Uh, but this is, this is where it's a chicken and egg thing. So you need to push the beta out to at first a small base of users, improve it until you can push it out to a larger base, improve it until you can uh, basically release it to fleet wide, right? Um, so you need to release the beta in order to improve it. Um, so that's where it is chicken or egg. The overall goal is to save lives, 40,000 vehicle deaths in the United States every year and what, a million worldwide. So uh, I think it would be foolish and uh, immoral to try to halt or slow the progress of the one thing that seems to be a solution to that immense amount of, of deaths per year. It does beg the question if NHTSA steps in and that they could slow it down. We don't know how that, it would be a mistake. I absolutely agree. Um, let's uh, kind of wrap on the, the topic and two around safety. You know, there's debate out there. You see these headlines. Uh, you wonder, are Teslas safe? Are they not safe? What's your view? So there's two things. One is what happens if you get in a crash and two, how likely is the car to avoid a crash? So broken up into those two aspects, uh, according to NHTSA crash tests, this is objective data, 
uh, Tesla vehicles hold the top four spots for lowest probability of injury of any vehicles ever tested. Um, so if you do get in a crash, you want to be in a Tesla. Um, but obviously, it's even better to avoid the crash completely. And that's where the IIHS gave Tesla the, their highest superior rating in vehicle to vehicle crash avoidance because of their awesome sensor suite and, and data and improvement. The naysayers, the bears say about Tesla safety is that what people, uh, the companies overstating the bounds of what FSD and autopilot do, or do they just say that, you know, these tests that NHTSA is doing just aren't accurate and ultimately these are dangerous cars? Yeah, so I think a lot of people are pointing to consumer reports recently that said they were able to trick the Tesla into driving itself without a human. Uh, one, that's impressive. You can't do that with any other car. And two, uh, you can abuse a lot of products and services. So uh, you could put a brick on the gas pedal of an internal combustion engine car and hop out and let it go. Like you can abuse products and not uh, do what they are intended for and how you were instructed to. So they, they clearly outline, um, you know, as soon as you activate autopilot, they're constantly nagging you, telling you you need to pay attention at all times, keep your hands on the wheel. Uh, I think it's, it's reasonable for those that say that they via marketing or advertising more than it's capable of at this point. Uh, also the name autopilot people have an issue with. I think that's fine. Autopilot is a plane term where pilots can let the plane uh, do most of the flying during the trip and then kind of take off and land. And the rest is basically on autopilot, which is kind of similar with the car and, and highway driving. Good call on the you can kind of take and tweak things and make them more or less dangerous. I, I think I heard you say the car will nag you. If you didn't, I hope you said that because that's a pretty funny image. Undoubtedly, we'll be nagged by more machines in the future. <laughs> and I appreciate you letting me nag you to, to join <laughs> Loop TV here. On behalf of Matt, myself, and Loop TV, bye for now.